recording. Okay. So, um, um, I think one already announced this, no? So, magkakaroon tayo ng, or yung buong summative assessment number three, or yung buong coverage, na, yung third coverage natin will be not part of the assessments. And the first half, which is the introduction part, will be given as supplemental materials na lang. So, ito siya. So, that's for introduction to equilibrium diagrams, yung uh, free energy uh, versus temperature or the what is known as the Ellingham diagrams. Tsaka yung discussion on an example on the pressure-pressure diagrams and how to construct them. So, ito, ibibigay na lang as supplemental materials. You can read them on your own. And, uh, pero hindi na siya i -assess. But definitely, we will give uh, a module that will have, um, uh, this will still be a full-blown module, no? May module siya, may, may um, sample problems, tapos may handouts din. And we will also give some, a few videos that you can look, look into, no? But again, hindi na siya i -assess. Uh, Hence, uh, parang supplemental materials lang, which you can read on your own, no? And which will be useful in your uh, future subjects. Tapos, etong um, specific na there are um, we have listed specific diagrams, the equilibrium diagrams, ito no, that are useful for our course. Uh, we have the EHPH diagram, which involves Nernst calculation and equilibrium calculations. We also have your compositional diagra diagrams, um, which uh, is used to create the equilibrium phase diagrams. No, the ones we see in usually sa mga uh, physical met natin na uh, subjects no so ito i-move natin to met e17.1 or if you're using the old curriculum i-move siya to met e18 and um pwede rin for those uh that uh si Angelica I think um depending on the program coordinator pwede magkaroon ng bridging program uh, para ma-address tong uh etong mga omitted topics na to so, for the remainder of the SEM, ang gagawin lang talaga natin is si solutions. Itong tatlong to. So, we'll do ideal, real, and real solutions. Tapos, we'll also do uh, multi-component solutions which um, ipapasok na rin natin yung uh, non-standard states like uh, and specifically for solutions, it's the Henry and standard state uh, which I'll upload uh, later yung lesson. No? So, we have Henry and standard state tapos meron din tayong yung Gibbs-Duhem equation. Okay, so uh, I've already uploaded the ideal and real solutions and I hope yeah, you've al already seen them. Tapos, our, this module will last up until December 3. And uh, tama ba, Juan? Uh, meron na bang ano dito? I hindi pa natin ina-upload yung ano, no, assessment for solution. Okay, yung free energy meron na. Tapos, ano, uh, yung solutions i-upload namin soon. Okay? Tapos, eto, si adapt, si, uh, si adsorption isotherms, or this is more of uh, surf in general, surface thermodynamics lang to, no? Um, dito, this will be a parang ano lang siya, no? Conceptual siya na, no? Uh, we won't do heavy calculations for surf surface thermodynamics because in um, usually sa METI kasi hindi masyadong, ano, no? Uh, or yung surface science mas dini discuss in more detail sa uh, sa future na na ano na meti subject so ang gagawin lang natin muna sa dito sa, sa surface thermodynamics is more of um more of conceptual lang yung ano nito module na to so it's only up December four hanggang December nine lang siya uh, tapos uh, yung assessment niya will be more conceptual no wala siyang um, problem solving okay so the bulk of the problem solving will come from free energy calculations and your uh, solutions okay so yung deadline ng modular assessments uh, will be on december 10 then after december 10 we'll release the uh, exam which again will be uh, worth uh, three days but i think um Pwede namin i-extend to, no? Because uh, yung calculations kasi for energy and ideal solutions are are more complicated, no? So, I, hindi ko na maalala yung napag-usapan namin ni Ma'am Joy. Pero uh, I'll, I'll just edit this if, uh, ano, no? If there are changes. Pero at the very least, three days siya. So, 
um, magkakaroon tayo ng four more sessions for uh, asyn- asynchronous sessions, I mean, four synchronous sessions for uh, the remainder of the semester. So, yung first is today, which will discuss free energy. Yung next natin will be on December 2 and, wait, let me check my calendar now. It's December 1 and 3. Hindi naman holidays yun, Juan, no? Tama ba? Hmm. I'm sorry, it's December 2 and 4 pala yung uh, ano natin. Next two sessions. So, December 2, uh, we'll discuss solutions. And if we uh, kulang yung time, pwedeng i-discuss din natin on uh, the 4th, no? Because solutions are medyo complicated kasi yung mga uh, calculations doon, lalo na pag nag Henry and Standard State na tayo. So, uh, we can have 2 and 4 uh, for the solutions. Tapos, the adsorption isotherms, um, uh, we can rely on the modules, no? Para ano. Tapos, we'll have a final na uh, meeting at 16. So, this is more of, uh, ano lang, discussion on um, yung mga, yung Ellingham diagram, ay uh, yung introduction to equilibrium uh, diagrams. And siguro, hindi ko sure kung kaya ba natin uh, gawin. Kasi West lang kasi nandito, no? Pero if you want, we can also have a sort of parang online Christmas party or something dito sa December 16. If you, you guys are willing, no? Pwede naman na uh, gawin natin siya on the 16th sa last session natin. So, hindi ko alam kung how it works. <laughs> may, idea ka, may idea ba kayo kung how online parties work? Hindi rin. Ah. Ay, okay. So, so yun. Uh, mukhang hindi tayo makakaparty, no? Pero, if you guys want to organize, uh, I'm very willing to join, no? Kung meron kayong, just to, ano, no? Uh, siguro, end the year with, on a high note. Pwede siguro, magkaroon tayo ng Christmas party. And, kung may ma-organize kayo, uh, please, Invite me. Tapos, pwede siguro tayong we can have a small uh, online celebration. No? Okay. So, uh, yun lang for the changes and I hope that clarifies things. And because uh, ang gagawin kasi natin, again, is, di ba, i-move kasi natin uh, or tatanggalin natin yung summative assessment number 3 and therefore, meron tayong extra 20% na natira. So, that 20% uh, we are suggesting that we uh, we distribute it don sa uh, modular and sa uh, summative assessments. So uh, the original um, original na breakdown was parang ganito as modular. Twenty twenty twenty. And let me just, I don't know, check ko lang. So, it's 2020 and 60. So, ang gagawin natin is, i-move natin yung SA2 na to. So, siya, i-distribute natin siya. So, yung 10% mapupunta dito, yung 10, other 10% mapupunta dito. Ah, sorry, 40. Diba? So, magiging 50 to, and this will be bumped to 25, 25 each. Parang ganun yung proposal namin. So, wala kasi tayong ano ngayon, no? Kung magpo-poll tayo ngayon, si, si West lang yung sasagot ng poll. So, ah, uh, paano kaya to? Ah, uh, pwede sigurong... Mm, offline na lang na poll one can you uh, organize a poll kung mag-agree ba yung uh, students to these changes tapos if they don't agree can uh, they come up as a batch yung counter proposal nila kung ano yung pin nila fair na uh, redistribution of the 20% then we can me mom joy and uh, one and may can uh, talk about uh, ano yung uh, maging final decision. Okay? So, but uh, but on our side, ito yung proposal namin. We do 25% sa 
uh, summative assessment 1, 25 for number 2, tapos yung modular from 40%, gagawin natin 50%. Okay, so if uh, if they agree with this, uh, just um, they can agree with this through the poll. Or if they don't agree, um, pwedeng as a batch, kasama yung kabilang section, uh, they can uh, decide on a counter proposal. Tapos, we'll review this uh, as kami mga t teachers and TAs. Okay? Mm. Okay. Okay ba yun, Wes? Narinig ba ako ni Wes? Okay, sige. Gagawin na lang kitang class president din, Wes. <laughs> Kasi since ikaw lang nandito. Pwede bang uh, ikaw yung magiging point person ko from uh, this point uh, regarding this topic? If in case kailang, may kailangan akong kausapin, ikaw na lang. Can you coordinate with your batchmates? Okay lang ba sa'yo yun? Okay, thank you, Wes. <clears throat> okay, so I think those are the important na announcements no? uh, regarding the remainder of the schedule. Uh, again, ay, hindi ideal yung conditions natin, no? but we take what we can and uh, we make the best out of it. Okay, so... Let's go with, I don't know, na tayo sa, ano muna, free energy and equilibrium. Uh, so, we start with a uh, discussion of free energy muna. And, oh, sorry. And yo. Hi. So again, um, from the modules, I hope you uh, got a chance to read it. No, we've discussed. A... Nagita ba? Wait lang. Okay, naka full screen naman na yung ano no? Yung PDF ko. Nagita yung Gibbs free energy. Ay kalat lang. Ganito ko na lang. Mas okay to. Okay, ito na lang. Okay, so ito, um, we have Gibbs free energy, tapos we've discussed na meron tayong two types of free energy that are usually involved. And again, free energies are a type of, uh, ano no, a thermodynamic potential. And thermodynamic potentials are important when we want to describe yung yung potential to do work ng isang system. So, this could be any type of work, no? And, uh, mas na i-imagine natin or mas na ka-count uh, na, ano tawag dito, naka-quantify natin siya through thermodynamic potentials. And depending on the natural variables that we choose, we come up with the, the four types of uh, thermodynamic potentials, no? So, we have your internal energy, which we have discussed. Meron din tayong Enthalpy, which also has been discussed. Tapos merong, uh, ito yung two new uh, free thermodynamic potentials natin, which is the Helmholtz free energy, given as delta F, or pwede rin siyang sometimes delta A, no? So, wala kasing, um, across textbooks and online references, marami kasing uh, ginagamit na, ano, no? Na notation siya, uh, F and A. Uh, so, you'll sometimes see F, you'll sometimes see A, depending on uh, which textbooks you look at, no? And lastly, yung pinaka parang commonly used when it comes to I don't know, uh, engineering the Gibbs free energy. Okay, so for constant P and T, it's Gibbs free energy. Constant V and T, it's Helmholtz free energy. Notice that uh, si dito sa ano no sa internal energy and enthalpy, which was the first two na dinistas natin, it's it's somewhat difficult to control this, no? Because, uh, for example, eto, etong dalawang to, it requires that you maintain the entropy at a constant rate, which is uh, sometimes difficult to do, no? Na i-gawin mong constant yung uh, entropy mo, such that there is no entropy change. But if you look at Helmholtz and Gibbs, uh, it's very easy to control, no? Because temperature can be controlled uh, via uh, yung, yung parameters uh, that uh, the temperature parameter can be controlled in any experimental setup no and uh, that can be said also for for your volume that can also be said for pressure no that's why 
uh, for engineering cases and yung mga experiments usually uh, the yung Helmholtz sa Gibbs yung ginagamit natin if you want to take into account the thermodynamic potential okay um for our case for metallurgical engineering in general no uh, we usually use Gibbs because um yung volume kasi in most cases hindi natin kini keep constant no so if you look at for example yung mga mga uh, chemical reactions pag chemical reactions they are done in 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 an open uh, chamber lang like a beaker kunwari so it's at a it's not at a constant volume tapos pero we can uh, roughly assume that it is a constant temperature uh, constant pressure because it's at atmospheric pressure no so usually important lang si constant B when you have mga when you talk about for example mga explosives where uh you, meron tayong chamber na constant yung volume pwede rin sa mga high pressure yung mga high pressure chambers like mga leaching tanks mga ganun pwede ding pwedeng i, i tingnan yung constant B no and and for those cases mas appropriate si Helmholtz but in general for your metallurgical processes uh, usually delta G yung tinitingnan natin. Okay? So si delta G um <coughs> we can delta G is a ano no, uh state function therefore pwedeng ang if you want to calculate delta G we just use uh, uh the final state minus the initial state. Okay? So um if you are calculating for example yung standard na uh, free energy at 298 then we just take the delta G at 298 ng products minus the delta G na at 298 ng reactants. Taking into account again um, yung molar uh, quantities nila. So uh, it's similar to yung Hess's law. If you remember Hess's law, when we try to compute for the delta H of the reaction, uh, kailangan lang i-compute mo yung delta H ng, um, ng formation ng products minus the delta H of formation ng uh, reactants. Okay? And like uh, like your delta delta H, wherein yung uh, delta H ng stable elements is zero, ganun din sa ano no sa Gibbs free energy. The delta G for stable elements uh, is equal to zero. And we we can find tables uh, that have this delta G values no. So we this is the delta G of formation ng kunwari. Uh, this is a at the drug ACN. Ito yung mga delta G informations na. And if you want to take, uh, if you want to compute for the delta G of a particular reaction, then you just take the delta G of formations. Okay. But we can also calculate delta G from yung CP and delta H values. So kung meron tayong ganito, uh, delta G is, uh, this is the, ano no, um, yung pinakasikat na formula of delta G, which is delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So, hindi ko na pinakita kung paano din derive to their men, uh, I've I've shown you a few or I've given a few videos showing the der this derivation, no? So you can just look it up, no? But this is uh the uh, the equation that we all know and hopefully love. Uh we've seen this in mga sa chem natin, no? Sa chem 16, chem 17 and kahit sa high school, medyo na-discuss na rin tong gatas, no? Yung delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So at any temperature, we can uh, compute the delta G as just the delta H at that particular temperature minus the temperature uh, multiplied by T delta S at that particular temperature. So we note that um, we note that yung delta H at a particular temperature can be computed, no? Uh, using yung mga techniques na natutunan natin sa from the previous modules. So kung naalala nyo to, delta H at a particular temperature is just equal to delta H at 298, the standard uh, enthalpy uh, of the reaction, plus yung integral ng 298 uh, to T, delta CPDT, plus any, if there are any um, delta H of transformations. So, actually, ito, ito lang yung pag ginamit mo yung, ano no, yung thermodynamic loop. So, if you use the thermodynamic loop, you can solve for delta H T. Okay? Similarly, pwede rin gamitin natin yung thermodynamic loop to solve for the uh, delta S at a particular temperature T. So, ito lang siya, delta S at 298, which is just delta H of reaction at 298 over the transformation uh, or over the, uh, over the, 
temperature at which it is uh, um, evaluated. No? So, ito, uh, we have 298 to T, CPDT over T. Tapos, and this is, uh, again, uh, we remember na si, uh, si temperature natin, the variable temperature is uh, inside the integral, no? So, we evaluate it uh, inside the integral as opposed to being outside of the integral. Tapos, uh, we have uh, ito, yung mga uh, latent na heat natin. No? So, latent heat of transformation over the uh, transformation temperature. So, this is not necessarily the temperature uh, for which you are evaluating it. No? So, it can have different uh, transformation temperatures depending on uh, what type of transformations occurs and at what temperatures those transformation occur okay so if we try this uh we could try this uh on our own no? so if we have uh delta h of reaction uh 298 and given yung mga cp values niya tapos we are to solve for the free energy change for the dissociation of cupric oxide at 1273 Kelvin. So, ibuksan ko lang yung MS Math ko, no? Okay. Hindi kita. Kita ba? Kaya hindi kita. Okay, so if we were to compute this, um, <coughs> we can do given yung mga delta S at 298, given din yung First, uh, i-ano muna natin yung reaction. No? The reaction is just yung Cu dissociation. So, it's a dissociation reaction. So, para siyang Cu2O dissociates into Cu uh, plus O2. So, that becomes 1 half O2. Kasi ito magiging 2 Cu matuo. Okay, ah, medyo mahaba pala ito, no? So, I think uh, maybe I'll just uh, do the complete solution in a, hand, in a handout na lang, no? Para mas ma-imagine ito kasi medyo kulang na tayo sa time, no? Uh, 9.30 na kasi. Okay, so i-ano ko na lang. Uh, bigay ko na lang yung final solution nito as a handout. Okay? So, uh, also, pagka nagka-calculate na ng delta G, pwede rin siyang... Uh, gawin as a function of temperature, no? So, you can often see delta G as either a linear function, something like this. Delta G uh, at any given temperature T is just equal to a constant A plus a constant B multiplied by the temperature. So, if you plot the delta G versus uh, temperature, you'll have a straight line. And later, you'll see na itong, itong straight line equation na to can be seen in, in the Ellingham diagram, no? So again, uh, you have you'll also you can also have a delta G that is in a uh, logarithmic form, no? So meron siyang a plus a constant uh, b times t times the logarithm of the temperature t plus a constant c times t. And we take note that um, to use this um, usually, ato mga ano na to, empirical equations na to. Uh, they are only applicable at a certain temperature range. Okay? So, uh, pagka binigay naman tong tem uh, na yung mga ano na to, equation na to, um, usually binibigay naman kung ano yung temperature range na applicable siya. And usually, the temperature range corresponds to uh, the transformation uh, temperatures. No? So, for example, if it transforms at a particular temperature T1, kunwari, then, and it also transforms at another temperature T2, then the range could be from T1 to T2. Okay? 
here is an example of uh, ano no yung mga delta g as a function of temperature so for example for the um for the formation of aluminum oxide from pure aluminum and oxygen yung delta g niya can be given as uh, negative 400,700 uh, plus 76.60 T and this is, are all in uh, calories, no? yung, yung magiging final answer nito, multiplied by the temperature T. And notice that the, the temper, this temperature range is only for applicable for a temperature range of 923 Kelvin to 1800 Kelvin. So beyond those range, hindi na applicable tong delta G values na to. So uh, at this point class no uh, you you'll see that um, we use delta g and delta g not um, reversibly no or interchangeably um, for simplicity ginawa natin siya dito sa module na to pero later on sa next na lesson in this uh, same module you'll um, figure out na si delta g not is different from delta g no and we can uh, show it how to use those values. Pero for now, uh, let's just uh, assume that they, they can be used interchangeably. No? So we have delta G naught. Ito siya. And we can have uh, itong the, um, the decomposition of your cupric oxide into its component, uh, into its metal component, uh, copper and oxygen. So ito given by this equation. Ito siya, it this is the logarithmic form of the equation. So it depends on the ano no, on the uh, type of reaction kung uh, linear lang ba siya or uh, or logarithmic siya. And this is again uh, based on empirical na uh, equations no. So again, remember na itong mga empirical equations ato, they have a temperature range for which they are applicable. Okay? So we also have what something we call as the Ulix uh, approximation, no? So this occurs when your delta C P is approximated to be equal to zero. So when it is equal to zero, if you look at the first equation na binigay ko, ito, pag ginawa nating zero to, ay sorry, hindi pala ako lumipat. Sorry, sorry. So uh na pakita ko ba to kanina hindi no so eh ito i uh, run back ko lang konti no so again uh, ito yung uh, reaction niya tas ito yung magiging uh, parang empirical equation niya and ito yung range for which those empirical equation uh, is applicable so for ito si aluminum and oxygen uh, transforming into aluminum oxide it's equal to the uh, a linear function no with which is negative 400,000 400,700 plus 76.6 times the temperature and it is only applicable at 923 Kelvin to 1800. Tapos pag cupric naman, ito siya. Ito siya. Okay, so again, importante na i-take note natin tong temperature ranges. Okay, so ito, si Ulix approximation is uh, is uh, is done when um we or can be achieved if we approximate our delta cp to be equal to zero so we um if you look at the first equation if you equate this to zero this whole term becomes zero and this other term here also becomes zero so one assumption uh, one uh, other assumption of your uh ulix approximation is that dapat wala kang transformation involved from 298 yung reference temperature mode to uh, whatever um, t t you are evaluating at so kung wala kang uh, transformation matatanggal na rin tong delta h transformation na to at saka yung uh, latency to transformation divided by the temperature of transformation so matatanggal yung term to at and you will be left with uh, the delta h at 298 minus temperature times the delta s at 298 so um this means that at any given temperature pwede mo makuha yung delta g niya just by looking at the uh delta h and delta s values at uh at standard uh temperatures and pressures okay so and in fact i think uh, this is a very commonly used sa ano no sa when we dun sa high school natin saka yung chem 16 and chem 17 
and we just look up the delta H values, but we are actually looking up yung STP values niya, no? And we look at the delta S values, the STP values, tapos minumultiply natin at uh, at a particular temp elevated temperature, no? Okay, so we are actually doing a, an approximation pag ganun yung ginawa natin. But you'll notice that if you do this, I don't know, uh, if you do this problem, and I encourage you to do this on your own, no? Uh, this problem is, uh, kinocompute mo yung delta G for the given reaction at 800 Kelvin. So you'll do the thermodynamic loop. Tapos, compute nyo siya. And compare nyo siya with the, uh, if you use Ulix approximation, and you'll notice na, Sobrang lit lang ng uh, percent error no, or yung percent deviation. So try this on your own and try to compute the percent deviation. Okay? So y yung last na way of calculating delta G is through a graphical na approach. no. So uh, this graphical approach uh, is sometimes called as the Ellingham diagram or the Kellogg diagram. Uh, pero yung mas sikat is the Ellingham diagram. No? So the Ellingham diagram is just a collection of lines that shows the uh, 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 the oxidation reaction of uh, different metals and nakalaga, uh, it is uh, drawn in a um, delta G versus temperature na, na graph. Okay? So you'll see notations such as uh, MP and BP. MP stands for melting point while BP stands for uh, boiling point. And these uh, inflection points indicate that uh, you have a change in uh, phase or a transformation uh, of your different phases. No? Okay, so uh, this is an uh, an example of a larger uh, Ellingham diagram. If you look at this, uh, you'll have several elements. Suppose the way we read it is um, if you have a particular temperature, uh, let's just say we want to look at the delta G uh, of reaction of uh, the oxidation of zinc, at all zinc. O zinc plus oxide is equal to 2ZNO. Then you'll use this one, 800. You project it upwards. Tapos project it dito and you'll get 500. Now notice that si Ellingham diagram is uh, actually, ano siya, no? Uh, kahit mo, uh, positive yung nakasulat dito, pero these are actually negative values, no? So if you look at it, this is the standard free energy formation, uh, which is equal to the negative delta G at uh, negative delta G naught. Okay. So uh, be very careful dito sa on how you read Ellingham diagrams because it might might look like um, positive value siya, pero actually negative siya. Okay. Uh, similarly, ato din if you look at this, uh, dito naman, uh, ito sa particular diagram na to naka uh, lagay naman na yung delta G value is in their negative value. So, dito hopefully mas less confusing siya, no? But in some delta, in some Ellingham diagrams, lalo na yung makikita nyo online, usually you can see na na naka posit, seemingly positive value siya. But uh, be careful, no? It's supposed to be a negative value. In most cases, negative, uh, negative value talaga siya for the delta G. Okay? So, um, you'll notice na si, meron mga nomographic features si Ellingham diagram, no? Itong CO-CO2 ratio and H2-H2O ratio. And this can be used uh, when we take, uh, we want to get the partial pressures of, um, of the gases involved when uh, we are at equilibrium conditions. So, ngayon hindi pa niyo siya masyado ma-imagine pa. Pero when we do construction of, adun sa supplemental materials natin, if we do construction of pressure-pressure uh, diagrams, makikita nyo yung usefulness ng uh, H2H2O ratio na to. So, parang, it's a sort of shortcut, no? Kasi usually, you need to calculate the, uh, the partial pressure ratios by looking at the equilibrium na equilibrium constant, as from equilibrium constant, uh, i-co-compute mo yung magiging uh, partial pressures na. Pero for the Ellingham diagram, you can just use the these nomographic features. No? So, uh, siguro preview lang on how to use it. Kunwari lang, uh, you are at 800 degrees Celsius looking at the 
uh, zinc oxide plus uh, ZNO as zinc plus oxygen to produce zinc oxide. Then if you want to get the resulting, if this was done in a aqueous solution, kunwari, if you want to get the resulting H2 and H2O gas na evolution and the ratio of those gases, then you just use itong dot na to, you project it. Tapos kung saan siya tatama dito sa uh, H, H2O line, then you can get the uh, magiging projected ratio ng H2 and H2O. Similarly, pwede mo rin makuha yung kung kunwari carbonaceous yung ano niya, environment niya. So you can have CO and CO2 ratio or pwede rin yung, yung mismong partial pressure ng oxygen. So if it's done in air lang kunwari, pwede in oxygen. And you'll just use, you need to use these different markers now. Okay, so more of that oh, when we discuss uh, construction of equilibrium uh, diagrams. Okay, so that's for uh, free energy as a whole, no? Kung, uh, what how we cal calculate delta G. But there is a difference between yung, uh, again, uh, from this point, we use delta G and delta G not interchangeably, no? But there is actually a big difference between them. And you can read the modules para to get a more detailed uh, understanding of delta G and delta G naught. Pero basically, delta G naught indicates how far we are uh, from, I don't know, from the equilibrium condition. Okay? So, if we do the, we will have something like, if we do the final derivation, we will have something that looks like this, no? The delta G uh, is equal to the delta G naught plus RT times LN of, uh, in this case, it's P, no? Pero if we do the, um, for example, if we do different na uh, species, then we can have something that looks like, Ah, hindi na pakita dito no? pero magiging ano to delta G is equal to delta G naught plus RT times LN uh, P of the product times P of the uh, times uh, or the uh, the if you multiply all the products uh, partial pressure divided by uh, the mul um, if you multiply all the reactants um, partial pressures taking into account yung ano no yung yung number of moles which is uh, expressed as a um tawag dito it's expressed as a exponent okay so basically etong term na to this becomes your reaction co reaction quotient q no if you remember from chem uh, you'll have a, a reaction quotient q and the reaction quotient q is just equal to and i think it's in the next slide no the reaction quotient q is equal to uh, your uh, activity of a particular na uh, species uh, of the product uh, raised to the power of uh, kung ano man yung element niya, uh, ano man yung uh, stoichiometric na molar niya, uh, number of moles, I mean. So, uh, plus the activity of R, so kung ito yung product, so that's activity of R raised to the power of as R, number of moles of that particular species R divided by yung sa uh, <coughs> yung sa reactants naman. Okay? So, this is uh, actually a reaction quotient Q. No? This is uh, in, in general, ito yung reaction quotient Q natin where activity is uh, the contribution or kung ano yung nagiging effective na ano no? concentration ng species na yun or contribution niya dun sa uh, reaction. Parang ganun. Okay? So, um, for gases, usually, ang activity can be, e uh, is just equal to the partial pressures. Tapos, for solutions, dilute solutions, yung activity is equal to, is equal to yung, ano mo, yung, um, yung molar concentration. Tapos, for real gases, we can use fugacity, no? But, um, in in general hindi ginagamit yung fugacity no eh uh, most likely ang ginagamit lang is yung partial pressures tapos if you have solid solutions uh, if you have solids uh, the activity if it's a and this will be discussed sa ano no sa 
sa solutions na module, uh, you, you can um, actually have uh, different equations relating to the activities. Pero uh, for if it's ideal conditions, ang gases is just equal to the partial pressure. Pag uh, solution siya is just equal, or dilute solutions I should say, is equal to the molar, uh, uh, the molar uh, concentration niya. Okay. So dito uh we will uh relate the if we simp uh ito na yung ano pala hinahanap po equation. So if we simplify the equation taking into account the delta g's of the different uh, reactants and products, we will uh get something that looks like this, no? Uh the delta g is equal to the delta g not uh plus uh, RT LN uh, Q. Again, yung Q is the uh, reaction quotient. Okay? So, uh, if you if you look at the yung first lesson natin no, delta G, I mentioned uh, different cases or on how we can um, ito yung parang we, we can use delta G as an indicator if a reaction will move forward or not. Okay? So, um, if the delta G is less than zero, that is, it's a negative value, then the reaction will be spontaneous. This is also known as an exergonic process. But if the delta G of uh, the reaction is greater than zero, then it is non-spontaneous. And this will not occur uh given the particular conditions no so if you were given a particular system given uh, a certain set of conditions you can actually predict kung uh, mangyayari yung equation uh, yung yung reaction na yun or not simply by just looking at the delta g so uh, this is very important no kasi if you look at something like mga uh, let's take uh, an example of mga metallurgical process, no? like kunwari, an annealing process. So, if you do annealing, how will we know if at a certain temperature condition, kung um, magkakaroon ba tayo ng larger grains? Parang ganun. So, can we um, accurately predict if we have, uh, if the temperature we are working on uh, actually produces larger grains? Um, if we allow the system to be at that particular temperature. So, in that case, we need to look at the delta G, no? So, from delta G, kaya natin ma-predict, ah, okay, for this particular condition, hindi, hindi siya magkakaroon ng, um, ng changes in its microstructure. So, pwedeng ganun. Uh, another uh, example will be, kunwari, for, for mineral processing, no? So, there is actually a delta G involved in creating uh, new surfaces, no? So, for example, uh, if you are breaking, you are commuting, uh, you are crushing, konware isang ore. So, by applying a certain amount of load, uh, is it possible to predict na this load can produce or, or can actually crush your material? And this is actually, can be computed, no? By taking note uh, of, the delt, of the final delta G or the final Gibbs free energy of the uh, parang commuted na ore versus the ore uh, uh, in contact uh, or yung ore as a whole, pwede mo makompute kung, kung negative yung delta G nun, ibig sabihin, most likely magbe-break or magko-commute yung, yung ore mo. Okay, parang ganun. So, the delta G has many applications, no? And in fact, kung, again, uh, ito yung sinabi ko from the start of the SEM, no? Kung merong key takeaway na kung if you can only take one uh, concept away from uh, this semester, Pico Delta G yung pinaka nagagamit or magagamit mo in in future na subjects. No? Delta G is, hindi lang siya, ano no, hindi lang siya parang, um, parang purely calculations. Conceptually, it is also very, ano no, uh, useful uh, when it comes to parang application into more complicated systems no? and or into systems that are uh, into practical systems that we often use in 
metallurgy. Okay? So, um, with that, yung delta G natin, um, we can now say na if we were at equilibrium, meaning uh, yung system natin has no preference, hindi niya preferred to go in the forward direction or hindi niya preferred to go in the reverse uh, direction or more accurately, uh, yung forward reactions uh, equals the reverse reactions, then we have an equilibrium na condition. Okay, so um, yung equilibrium conditions natin, again, uh, from this, we know that equilibrium is reached when your delta G is equal to zero. So when delta G, if we set this uh, delta G here equal to zero, then we have your delta G naught is e uh, plus RT ln Q is equal to, uh, uh, ito, we can transpose this to the left hand side uh, or we transpose the RT ln Q to the left hand side and we rearrange. And then we have delta G naught is equal to negative RT ln K EQ, uh, RT, negative RT, T ln uh, Q. But uh, at equilibrium, yung reaction quotient natin is just the equilibrium constant. And we learned this from Chem 16. No? So, therefore, uh, if we know the equilibrium constant, uh, equilibrium, uh, that, uh, that's correct. No? If you know the equilibrium constant, then we can compute for uh, the delta G naught. Pero more useful to us is if we know the delta G naught, we can compute kung ano yung magiging um, equilibrium constant niya. And by knowing the equilibrium constant, malalaman na natin kung ano yung magiging um, parang um, equilibrium concentrations or equilibrium activities ng species involved. Okay? So, conceptually, if you think about this, parang kunwari, if you leave a system on its own, meron kang kunwari... Um, uh, a bunch of species, no? Tapos, if you leave it on your own for a long period of time and it reaches equilibrium, uh, if we know delta G, kaya natin mapredict kung ilan percentage ang of each species ang natira doon sa uh, ano, system natin. Simply by knowing delta G naught and knowing uh, this equation. Okay? So, um, Siguro I have I've mentioned na ano no um that delta G and delta G naught is quite different no and uh, the key to understanding the relationship between yung G naught uh, and K is recognizing that the magnitude of delta G naught tells us how far from the standard state we are from the equilibrium parang ganun yung sinasabi niya so for example, if um, if you look at this graph, no, this is a graph of the ln Q versus your delta G value. Then you can see na when your um, when your delta G is equal to delta G naught, that is when ln Q is equal to zero. You can see na eto yung um, value ng standard state natin. So kung baga, si value ng standard state says that Kung, kung gaano ka kalayo doon sa um, equilibrium concentrations o we we say equilibrium condition no but we mean uh, kung ano yung mga equilibrium concentrations ng ano natin so uh, the smaller the value of delta g uh, this means we are closer to the standard state or this means that the standard state is closer to the equilibrium state uh, but if you have a larger na uh, value of delta g not then we have a or the um, the reaction must travel further to reach e e the equilibrium na condition. Okay. Um. Siguro the best way I can uh, ano nito no. Um. <coughs> si delta G not kasi is um is not at STP no. Although it 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 yeah it says uh, usually pag may not di ba usually ang ang understanding natin is naka STP to um, but it's not at standard temperature and pressure no delta G not is it is at standard temperature no it is at a uh, um a concentration of or it is at a uh, temperature of 298 pero yung delta G not natin hindi siya necessarily na one atmosphere no so it is at the um, at a concentration level wherein yung 
activity ng involved species natin is equal to 1. Okay? Because when uh, the activity of the involved species is equal to 1, uh, if you look at Q, no? Ito yung ano natin, L and K, Q. Ito, Q natin is just equal to the activity of uh, the of the products divided by the activity of reactants. If all of those these activities are equal to 1, then this becomes ln of 1. And ln of 1 is equal to 0. Okay, so yun yung sinasabi natin uh, delta G naught. Kung ang, ang, ang standard state of the D, G naught is when you have uh, um, an activity of all the involved species equal to 1. Okay, if you want, uh, I think there is a link. Merong isang link na provided dito, no? So, ito, uh, this link here, uh, this, uh, <coughs> this is a um, very useful link in understanding yung difference between delta G and delta G naught. If eh, hindi sufficient yung, uh, yung pagka-explain ko ngayon, I think uh, you, you will learn more if you take a look at this link, no? Okay? So, from that, uh, pwede tayong, uh, this is an, an, a practice problem, no? So, kung, kunwari, meron tayong uh, pinapakompute sa atin yung equilibrium ratio between H2 and H2O for the oxidation of chromium in water vapor at 1000 degrees Celsius. And this is the uh, reaction. And we are given the delta G naught no? at 1273, which is 41 kilocal. Then, from that, we can actually compute the uh, equilibrium concentrations na. So we know that delta G naught is equal to negative RT ln KEQ. And for gases, si KEQ natin or si reaction quotient natin is just equal to yung products over the reactant. So if you look at this, uh, the product is uh, a gas, H2, uh, and this has a, a number of moles is 2. That becomes the partial pressure of H2 raised to the power of 2 multiplied by the activity of chromium oxide. And dito kasi we are assuming that the uh, this solid is purely Cr2O3, no? So if it's a pure solid, the activity of a pure solid or any condensed phase for that matter, no? Is a condensed phase meaning yung solids and liquids. Uh, the activity of any condensed phase, pure condensed phase, I should say, is equal to 1. So that's why natanggal na yung activity ni uh, chromium oxide dito. So divided by the partial pressure of your... Uh, H2O and this is a gas so therefore measure some partial pressure and 2 yung number of moles niya that's why raised to the power of 2 din siya. So uh, and not, and if you notice a denominator din natanggal din si chromium nyo because chromium here is a uh, pure condensed phase. Okay, it's a solid phase and uh, ang assumption dito is pure sila. So uh, that's why activity is equal to 1 so natanggal na rin siya. So we have something that looks like this. So from here uh, makukuha na natin yung magiging final ratio niya, no? which is equal to pH2, uh, pH2 is equal to 3309. But, uh, I've, I've mentioned this class, no? na ito actually yung ratio na to kaya din siya sa Ellingham diagram. No? And let me just show you kung Ellingham diagram yung ginamit nyo. If you use Ellingham diagram, uh, ano yung sample na yun? That was chromium in oxygen, no? So, chromium in oxygen. So, that's chromium Cr. Ito siya. 4 third Cr plus O2 is equal to chromium oxide. So, notice na naka-O2 to, no? Uh, and dito, dito sa ano na to, sa problem na to, naka-H2O yung involved species na. Uh, these are equivalent na, ano, no? Equivalent lang na reactions because if you look at it, uh, pwede mo kasing i- ano to, if you use the hydrolysis of water, kaya mo actually makonvert tong equation na to, yung reaction na to, uh, into, the, into this reaction. So, yung hydrolysis of water is just yung H2O yields uh, H2 plus 1 half O2. Or pwede rin baliktad, H2 plus 1 half O2 will yield uh, H2O. So, if you use that, pwede actually makompute siya, no? So, if you know the temperature, kunwari yan, that was you use this H line here, if you, kung saan siya tatama, kunwari, ano bang binigay? Uh, it was 1273 degrees Celsius pa Kelvin. So, that's 8. 1273 is 800 ba? 1000. So, 1000 
from dito, tapos we use a line from H to that point. Kung saan siya tatama sa H2, H2O ratio, yun actually yung magiging ano niya. Yung pH to H2O ratio. So, again, very convenient tong ano, no? Nung Ellingham diagram to solve it. Pero for uh, this part of the, for summative assessment number two, no? Kung, kung if you're given this problem, uh, we encourage you to use the equations, no? As opposed to using the Ellingham diagram. Okay. So uh, there are many ways to to uh, parang ano no maraming ways to uh, formulate different problems involving uh, delta g and delta g not and uh, doon sa handouts meron tayong mga uh, ano no sam other sample problems shown so you, you can check it check them out no para makita niyo kung paano siya ginagamit okay so um Ang last natin na pwedeng i-discuss dito sa ano delta G is the different relationships no that can be derived from the delta G calculation so uh, the two uh, important ones that we call them as equilibrium equations no is the Van Hoff equation and the clausius clapeyron equation so the Van Hoff equation is just saying na in delta H not over RT squared is equal to D ln kp over dt and you can actually compute uh, this no so if we evaluate this uh this e equation here we get ln kp is equal to delta h naught over negative rt plus constant plus a particular constant so this is saying na if you know the uh if you know the equilibrium constant at a particular temperature then you can actually predict the equilibrium constant at a, another temperature given that you are given that the delta h is known parang yun yung sinasabi dito and siguro dito ba yung graph you can imagine it more no if you just look at this equation this equation actually is a linear equation lang siya no if you look at it this is y is equal to mx plus b if you plot your ln kp versus your 1 over t then you can have a uh, an a linear equation no? so if you know the the temperature at one point then you can know the equilibrium uh, if you know the equilibrium constant at one temperature point then at another temperature point you can predict reliably predict reliably predict the uh equilibrium constant at another temperature of course if you know the delta h not kasi yun yung kailangan mo uh, as the constant as the um slope no so ang magiging slope sa equation na to is actually the delta h not over r okay that's atong constant na to this is just the y intercept if you were to plot this okay the clausius clapeyron equation is given as uh and these are actually similar forms no if you look at it, this is the uh, ang sinasabi dito sa clausius clapeyron is that if you have two, if you have uh, gases involved and you know the um, latent heat of evaporation for that particular gas, then at an at a different na pressure, atmospheric pressure, you can reliably predict kung ano yung magiging uh, elevation ng uh, or ano yung magiging a uh, latent heat of uh, evaporation at that particular pressure. So you probably heard of this anecdote no, wherein yung boiling point ng water uh, is different at uh, sea level versus at kunwari at the top of the mountain. No? Parang ganun. Uh, you siguro you've heard of this na yung mga mountaineers they actually have it uh, they can actually um, when they're climbing mountains no Parang mas madali nilang naboboil yung water uh, dun sa higher elevations as compared to sea level kasi parang mas mababa yung uh, parang vapor pressure niya. So, mas mababa yung boiling point kumbaga. Okay? So, that is a, that is exactly because of uh, yung, yung phenomenon is known as the boiling point depression. No? Pero, uh, you, you can uh, compute it using Clausius-Clapeyron equation. No? Okay? This is what this equation and you can do 
uh, ano no, parang you can do sample uh, problems, just try to look at kunwari, water kunwari, tapos uh, compute nyo yung you know the boiling point of water at uh, one atmosphere, that is at sea level, try nyo yung compute kung what happens when you are at elevated temperature, you'll notice na uh, yung magiging boiling point niya will actually be lower Arang ganun. Okay, so uh, those are just the. Siguro we, we can end with this, no? Um, Gibbs free energy is a somewhat difficult topic, no? Uh, but um, when you mastered it, lalo na yung conceptual side niya, if you mastered it, uh, it could be very useful sa, sa inyo uh, in your uh, journey as um, metallurgical engineering students, no? Or engineering students in general. Okay, so yun lang. Uh, may questions ba? Wes, uh, do you have any questions before we end the session? Okay, that's good. So, um, uh, it's unfortunate no na ikaw lang nakapasok ngayon. Uh, siguro baka may connectivity issues yung ibang kaklase nyo. Uh, but, uh, but I've recorded the session and hopefully uh, ma, i, ma view nila. And if you have any further questions no outside sa uh, na discuss ngayon pwede namang i-contact nyo kami ni Juan